Greetings YouTube and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to start off with a, a collection video. And what console are we going to do today? Well, more specifically, what computer are we doing today? And yeah, today, today's collection is, if I can pick the box up, is the Commodore 64. And yeah, not only that, yeah, it's the, it's the Terminator 2 Word Judgment Day pack. Yeah. But yeah, when I bought this off eBay, I didn't even know it was a Terminator 2 pack. Some person just said that it was, it was just a Commodore 64 bundled with a few games. But I wasn't expecting it to be bundled with like the Terminator 2. Yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the box itself looks cool. I know what it says on the button, on the bottom, bottom, sorry, can't even speak. Yeah, it says, I've returned. Well, the only compot, I'll be back because that'll be copyright. Yeah, so, yeah. That's probably the best thing about it because, yeah, the Terminator 2 game is absolute bollocks. It is absolutely shit. It has some really bad hit detection and, uh, yeah. The game itself comes on the cartridge, which I have in the box somewhere. Well, not in the box, but I, I've got it in another box that I've got sat on my lap. But yeah, not only that, it has other stuff on you. Yeah. It has like a, I know it has like a music, a music maker and like a, an arts thing, which uh, I haven't figured out how to use that. I know I'm, I'm rubbish at creating music and like paints and pictures. Yeah. The only time I've ever used, like, uh, the only time I've ever done painting and stuff like that on the computers with Microsoft, like, paint all those years ago. But, yeah, I've got the Terminator 2 cartridge somewhere. Yeah, it, co it comes in this uh, box, yeah. And you wonder why why Terminator 2 is so bad. Yeah, LJN, enough said. But, yeah. And yeah, no, it's Ocean, yeah, their, their games were a bit hit and miss. Unfortunately, quite a few were a miss on the Commodore 64, as usually Ocean did a better job on the Spectrum. So, yeah. And of course, I've got a joystick here. That if I've got it, like, wrap, wires wrapped on, yes, yeah. I know it's the, it's the Quick Shot, the Turbo, yeah, the Quick Shot Turbo 2. It's not, it's not the best the joystick, if I'm being honest with you, but as I say, it does the job, but I need to get another joystick at some point, uh, particularly the zip stick, because I think that's a favourite amongst the uh, amongst those who've had like the Commodore 64 Spectrum and Amstrad or whatever. But yeah, it does the job, but as I say, it's a little bit finicky. But yeah, so what other games have we got here? Well, we've got a few like packs. Uh, we have got a. Uh, this one is like a. I know this one's like the, the whole Hollywood pack here because it's like movie, movie games. Though one of them isn't a movie at all and that is Miami Vice because that's a TV show. But yeah, um, so the, the five games that they got and they've got Rambo First Blood Part 2 which I think is a very good game, particularly with the music by Martin Galway. Uh, yeah, that, that, game, that game loads up pretty fine as well. Miami Vice, I can't get that to load for whatever reason, because sometimes, uh, sometimes your game, sometimes games on the Commodore 64 either don't load properly or they just don't load at all. I can't get Miami Vice to work, and it's probably a good thing because it is such a, it is an absolutely horrible game. It really is. It's terrible. But the music by Martin Galway again, absolutely brilliant. So you're gonna hear me say that. Uh, the other game I got is Platoon. I know uh, it. Some people love it. Some hate it. I don't think it's too bad. Not one of my favourite games on the C sixty four, but yeah, it's it's not bad. The, the music's great as well. And uh, there's the Great Escape, which yeah, one of my all time favourite movies. The game on the C sixty four, it could have been better. The problem that that one has is the, the choppy frame rate. It, it is really, it is really quite jarring, and not after a while it it do, it does start to give you a headache a bit. Again, another game that was much better on the ZX Spectrum. 
And then, last but not least, the other game is Top Gun. I'm not a fan of Top Gun as in the movie, to be honest with you. And the, the, ga the game itself, the game itself, not the greatest, but... It, it, do it does what it says. Oh no, and... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the Hollywood pack. Not bad, but not great. But yeah, we've got another, another like, compilation pack here. We've got a... Uh, the night the night moves pack and yeah the as say these are all, all all these games we've shown you are on on tape here yeah, on cassette the only game i haven't got on the cassette was that terminator 2 but yeah so there are four games on here uh and i'll tell you uh we got got sly spy secret agent a very good game very good i had quite fun quite a lot of fun with it I've not completed it yet, but it's sort of like a, it's a James Bond-esque game. I don't know, and your character looks a bit like uh, looks a bit like Roger Moore, who, in my opinion, is the greatest of all the Bonds. I know most people will say Sean Connery, but as much as I like him, I'm more of a Roger Moore fan personally. But yeah, Sly Spy, really good game. Um, next is underneath is Shadow Warriors, which it's all right. It's not bad, but honestly, it's not one of my favorites. And quite frankly, I'm not a fan of the original arcade game either. But of course, uh, Shadow Warriors was was Ninja Gaiden. But yeah, it was called Shadow Warriors over here in the European regions because yeah, they had something to do with the word ninja. It, it seemed too violent over here. Yet yeah, they allowed the last ninja, so uh, what gives? Um, next game is Nightbreed. That one, unfortunately, actually, I won't say unfortunately it doesn't load. Fortunately, it doesn't load because uh, yeah, I'm not keen on the game at all, if I'm being honest with you. Not a great game at all. Uh, Midnight Resistance, easily the best game on this pack by, by quite a considerable mile. I mean, Sly Spy is very good. Midnight Resistance, absolutely fantastic. An absolutely brilliant conversion of a, a, a very good arcade game. In my opinion, I think the Commodore 64 version is better than the original arcade version. I really, really do. Fantastic music by, uh, I think, I'm trying to think who did the music for it. Uh I think it was it was Keith Tim and that's it. I was trying to think which uh, who did the music for that game because I will say uh, a lot of uh, music by Jonathan Dunn, Matthew Cannon and uh, Keith Tim and do they sound alike? Because yeah, it's Ocean. But yeah, this could possibly be my favorite game. One of my well, this could possibly be one of my favorite arcade conversions of all time. It is absolutely fantastic. Probably my favourite Ocean game so far that I own on the Commodore 64. I think the best game... O actually, well, actually, no. It's probably my second favourite Ocean game so far on the C64 that I own. But yeah, so that's pack. And then uh, next in this, uh, we've got another one. This one is... Uh, we've got Epics. Epics. So yeah, this one has got some, uh, some really... Some decent games on there. Um... I, I bought it particularly for, for one game. I mean, all the other, most of the games are really good, but there's one game I bought this for, and uh, oh my god, I, I think this is I think it's one of the the greatest games on the Commodore 64, bar none. And uh, and that game is a uh, yeah, let's have a look. Back. And that game is a uh, Impossible Mission. Oh my goodness, one of the most addictive games on the C64. Very difficult, especially when you're trying to solve some of the puzzles, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I've, play, I've played this game quite a few times. I haven't completed it yet, but it, it's a lot It's a lot of fun figuring out all the different puzzles. Yeah, with, with some of the most incredible speech ever to be made, ever to be heard on the Commodore 64. Some absolutely fantastic digitized speech. Yeah. As he, as he say in the game, Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. But yes, I just had a lot of fun with this game. 
probably my second favorite game on the Commodore 64. I really enjoyed it. And then next we've got a uh, summer games, which is a uh, yeah. If you like your sports games, then this was fun. It, it's a joystick waggler, so uh, be careful about your wrist, though. The yeah, you you after about ten minutes or so, you dear God, you can barely move your wrist after that. And that was that. Uh, next we got break dancer, essentially a game where you 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 break dance and you have to like try and score more points than the uh, the computer. And of course, you can play this on two player. It's it's not a bad game. The controls are a little bit finicky, but honestly, it's it does what it says. And then the next game is a uh, Pit Stop Two. I already have uh, I already have Pit Stop Two on another cassette, but we'll we'll show that in a second. Yeah, a fantastic, fantastic like racing game. It really is one of my absolute favorites on the Commodore sixty four. Yeah, I don't own the first Pit Stop, which I think that, that's a good game, but Pit Stop 2 is one of is better and one of the best. So now we're actually, well, no, nah, I'm just having a look at some of the other tapes I've got. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, begin with the other tapes that I've got. Uh, next we've got this darts game uh, called 180 or, well, 180. But yeah, it, it's, it's a fun little darts game. I remember the first time I play this I wasn't particularly keen on it but once I got the hang of it I quite it's quite good it really is I, I've never I've never beaten it but I got pretty far I, I got to like I got like near towards the end of the game but I didn't beat it but yeah it's it's actually a, a very it's a fun game yeah it's got some yeah it's got some nice music by David Whittaker, so you, you can't really complain. Um, next game. The, the, the first game of this only came out on the ZX Spectrum. I think it might come on the Amstrad. But yeah, but this is the sequel to that game, which it, or which came out on those systems. But it also came out on the Commodore 64. And that is uh, Agent X2, uh, the Mad uh, Prof... Uh, was it? Yeah, the Mad Prof's back. Yeah, to read, 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 read the title. Yeah, the, the, there's only there's like uh, there's three levels in the game. The first level is like a, a shoot 'em up stage, and then the next one I remember is like a puzzle stage, and then the third and final level is sort of like a, an Arkanoid uh, style level. And yeah, yeah, there are. I mean, I think this for a budget game here. Yeah, it's by Mast Mastertronic. It's not for a budget game. It's actually not too bad though. But yeah, but the the best thing, of course, is uh, the soundtrack by Tim Falling. You can't, you cannot complain about that. Yeah, his music makes a good game slightly better. Yeah, I I quite actually quite like this game. Um, next game is uh, if I try and grab it. Uh, next game is uh is a uh, ac action biker with uh, yeah clumsy Colin yeah because he was yeah because this game was meant to have something to do with uh, the crisp skips but yeah it's it's a budget game and I actually uh, I don't mind this game too much I mean I w I won't say it's the greatest game in the world but there, there's something about it I do like though I haven't uh, played it in a while so yeah. I, I, I just like having a look at like the, the inlays and stuff like that. So, yeah, stuff like that. It, it, I, I need to play this game a bit more, but I do, I do like it. And uh, it's one of the first uh, Commodore 64 games that have music by the legendary Rob Hubbard, who's my favourite synth musician. I've made no... Uh, well, I've made it clear many times that I'm a fan. Um, next game is uh, is Arcadia, a very, quite an early Commodore 64 game released in 1983. It, it's all like a, it's all like a space game, but I I've only played this game once, and uh, yeah, I quite like it. Though of course, it the controls do take a little bit of getting used to, but from what I played on my first, well. On the only time I've played it so far, I've had quite a lot of fun. 
So that is uh, Arcadia. Uh, next, we've got an ocean game, and this one, this one's quite good, but and I'm still trying to figure out how to uh, play it properly. Uh, it is uh, it's Batman: The Caped Crusader. In this uh, this Batman game, it, it it's sort of like a it's made in like a comic book style, and uh, yeah, it, it's actually quite a good game. And yet, yeah, is this the best Batman game on the Commodore 64? No. That would probably be the game based off the movie. I haven't, I don't own it personally, but I have played and I had quite a lot of fun with it. But yeah, this actually isn't that bad of a game. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but yeah, I actually had quite a quite a blast with this, and uh, some good music as well by Fred Gray. So that's all I can say. Um, next, we're on to another an arcade conversion, not the best, but. I mean, it could it could be worse. Yeah, it's uh, it's Bomb Jack. Yeah, if you're gonna play Bomb Jack on the microcomputers, go for the Spectrum version. I, I've got to be honest with you. But I mean, as arcade conversion on the C64, it could have been it could have been better. It really could. But yeah, but yeah, Bomb Bomb Jack's a good game. Not so much on the Commodore 64. Only worth loading it up so you can listen to uh some six a sixty a C sixty four doing a rendition of uh, Jean Michel Jarre yeah, but yeah some absolute some good music. Uh, next, if Midnight Resistance isn't the best arcade conversion of the Commodore sixty four that I own, it would be Boogie Boy. Oh yeah, I think this is a this is a really good game. I think the only criticism that I have and uh, yeah. It's the fact that you have to hold up on the joystick to uh, accelerate, but other than that, this this is a fantastic arcade conversion. I really recommend this, and uh, yeah, I, I've played this game on other various. Uh, I've played other various versions of it, and I don't, the Commodore sixty four version could possibly possibly be my favorite one of it, or the Amiga one. The Amiga one as well. That is pretty good. So that's a buggy boy. I've just gone through these games as quickly as I can because I've got other stuff to do. I mean, I wasn't. I said I was going to do one state if I had time, but anyway, we'll, we'll stop waffling. Just get on with it. <laughs> uh, next, uh, we have got uh, we got Chubby Gristle. Yeah, by uh, who made this game? A uh, bug bite, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's a Jet Set Willy rip off. Yeah, and that means one thing: the game's fucking impossible. <laughs> yeah, I cannot get anywhere on this game at all. Yeah, uh, I it's not bad if it's just too it's just too hard for its own good. Yeah, good music as well by Ben Daglish, but dear lord, the difficulty on this game is absolutely abs absurd. I have no. I don't know how anyone can make progress in it. So yeah. Um next game is a uh, we've got we've got Dan Durr, Pilot of the Future. But yeah, this is the first Dan Durr game that's on the Commodore 64. The Dan the first game of Dan Durr on the Spectrum is totally different and that's probably a much better game than this. I'm um, gonna be honest with you. I'm not a fan of this game at all. I know it has its fans, and it, it's based off the Dan Durr comics, which I've never, I've never read the Dan Durr comics, so uh, I don't know how close this game resembles to the comics. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this game at all. I just can't put my finger on as to why. Uh, and now, and now, we're on to another, another fantastic, another fantastic arcade conversion, and it's 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 Gauntlet. You cannot have a Commodore sixty four or a microcomputer without Gauntlet. I just this is a this is a phenomenal game. I enjoyed it. I mean, I can never get too far in it, but I don't care. It's, just, it's a blast destroying like loads of hordes of uh, enemies in the. Doesn't matter which card you use, they're, they're all great to use. I'm not sure which my favourite card is to use. I think I think it could be this character here where my finger is. 
you know, some like that wizard looking thing. But yeah, this is a really this is a fantastic game. Great arcade game. And it's just as great on the C64. Um, next Pro one of the few, if not the only one of the few 64 games I've actually completed. I don't even I mean what was your figure? Oh, it's not too bad, but it's still pretty damn hard. It's uh, it's uh, the legendary Hunchback by Ocean. Yeah, very very good game. Very good. But I know some people argue that the Spectrum version of Hunchback is better, and others argue that this one's better than the Spectrum one. But I don't know. It's hard to say because they're both really good. This is a uh, one of my favourites on the Commodore 64 so far. I, I think this is a great game. So, the yeah, Hunchback. Uh, next, um, another game. I think most people who own the Commodore 64 have had this game. And, uh, yeah. And it, it's a movie-based game. And this is probably one of, if not the best movie-based games for the C64. And it, it, it's Ghostbusters. Yeah, the game probably is a little bit repetitive. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's not it's not that bad of a game actually. I've I've never finished it, but I, I've gone very close to doing so. And then every time I play the car, I always have to pick the hearse, the car that you drive around in the original Ghostbusters movie. And yeah, and yeah, the C sixty four does a pretty good rendition of the Ghostbusters theme. Yeah, it will get on your tits after about ten minutes of music, but other than that. I can't write it. I think it's a good game. So that's Ghostbusters. Uh, next we got another budget game by Mastertronic. And it's uh, it's Kane. Another game that is pretty damn difficult. I know there's a, you have like a shooting range of where you're like killing birds. And then you have like one, you're riding a horse. And yeah, you, you, you're on a horse and... Uh, and what, what other stages are during this game... Yeah, no, there's some like, and there's like a, like, like a shoot off. But, yeah, Kane, it's not, it's not too bad of a game. Not one of my favourites, but it, it's, it does the job. And uh, now we've got another, another, another budget game, but this could possibly be the best budget out on the Commodore 64. And that is, uh, that is a uh, Kickstart 2. I don't own the first Kickstart, and funnily enough, I haven't played the first one, but Kickstart 2, brilliant game. Yeah. If you like Excite Bike on the NES, then I think you'd enjoy this game too. In fact, I'd probably argue you'd enjoy this one a little bit more. And like I was saying, it has, it has like a course design, so it like run... I know the game creates like its own random courses, so... Uh, each time you play, you get a different you get a different experience for it, yeah. And uh, it, it's programmed by uh, it's programmed by Sean Southern, yeah. Who of course uh, he did he programmed the Lotus games on the Amiga, and yeah, uh, you, you yeah, he know he knew how to program a game, and this game. Is absolutely fantastic. So that's Kickstart two. Um, next game we have got uh, we have got Mike Reed's uh, computer pop quiz. So yeah, it, it it it's a quiz game with well, it's a music quiz game. So if you like that sort of stuff, if you like your random music trivial like I do, I don't see why you shouldn't play this game. But fucking hell, the game has some really hard questions. I mean, when it comes to pop music and all that lot, especially certain songs, yeah, I know really, really, really well, sorry. But then when it asks stuff about classical music, I'm like, I haven't got a clue. I am not clued up on classical music whatsoever. But, yeah, it's, it's a fun little game. And uh, I think it, even, even, if, even if you're not a fan of stuff like that, there's still something to enjoy. I quite like this game. It's not brilliant, but it, it does the job. And now uh, we've got another ocean, um, another o ocean arcade conversion, and uh, it's a uh, it's the New Zealand story. And you know what? I mean, there's some there's some platformers that I'm not too keen on in C64. 
I know everyone raves about the New Zealand story. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think this is a bad game whatsoever. I really don't. But I don't know. It's just, it's not one of my favourites, I'm afraid to say. I do, uh, I mean, I actually prefer the one on the ZX Spectrum, personally, but... But yeah, it's not too bad, the New Zealand story, just not one of my favourites. I can't exactly put my finger on as to why I don't particularly enjoy it. But yeah, New Zealand story. I know it has its fans, but I'm just not one of them. Um, next, uh, another arcade conversion, and i got to be honest with you, the C64 version of it isn't great at all, if I'm being honest with you. This is one, one of my all-time favourite arcade games. The C64 version didn't do a good job in my opinion, and that is a that is Paperboy, and uh, you don't get much screen much screen area to see uh, what cars are coming ahead when you when you're trying to like throw and deliver papers. You only get about you only get to see about uh, twenty percent of what's on the screen, as in like you sometimes won't know a car is coming until it's too late, and then. Yeah, if if I'm lucky, I can sometimes make it to like the bonus round. Honestly, if you're gonna play Paperboy on the microcomputers, uh, I suggest probably the Spectrum version or the Ams. No, not the Amstrad one. That one's pretty ropey as well. But I'll probably say the Spectrum version of this is better. But I'm sorry, Paperboy on the C64 could have been a hell of a lot better. I mean, I don't mind. I like. I really like the music on it though, where uh, I think the C64 version has the best music of the Paperboy games. I mean, uh, I know the original arcade, the uh, Paperboy music sounds like the theme, sounds like the fucking tunes of Seinfeld with all the slap bass. But yeah, the music on this version is fantastic. Yeah, Mark Cooksey, very good job of the music. Probably the best thing about this game, well, this version. But yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it more if uh, if I had a bit more screen area to see what I'm supposed to be doing. Because other times I'm just going to get absolutely, yeah, uh, I just get absolutely twatted by, not the cars, but like the dogs running across the road and other shit, and other shitty obstacles you have to avoid to do your job and delivering papers. So yeah. Next is Pit Stop 2, yeah, I briefly mentioned that because it, uh, it was in, I showed off in like the Epic Epics, Epics Epics pack, so. Yeah, I, I already mentioned about Pit Stop 2, great game. And now we've got another Ocean game, and now this game was absolutely, absolutely fantastic, absolutely brilliant on the ZX Spectrum, and also just as great on the Amstrad. The C64 version, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I know it's not. I'm not not Chase HQ. Probably not. No, not not as bad as that. But yeah, we've got RoboCop on the Commodore 64. Mm, I'm. I do not like this game at all. I really do not. I on the Spectrum and Amstrad, absolutely fantastic. What the fuck did Ocean do to this game on the C64? Really? Now, don't get me wrong. There is one positive, though. This version has the best music of, of like, out of all the versions of Robocop. Worth it for Ocean Loader 4 and Jonathan Dunn's music, but dear me. Robocop on the C64 does not control well at all. And sometimes it's dead hard to see the bullets. And sometimes, like I say, your reaction times are just not quick enough. And even if you have the best reaction times, this game will still kick your ass. And there's one level that I think Ocean did fix in some versions, but yeah, there was one level where they didn't even bother to bloody fix it. It's like it's like the sprites are like a scrambled mess. Yeah. As I say, this game could have been really good on the C64. It could have been, but I don't know. Ocean really dropped the ball on this one. And, uh, yeah, here's another game that, yeah, a game based off uh, one of the greatest uh, kids' cartoons ever made. Too bad I can't say the same about the game, though. Let's be honest with you. Um, this is uh, Scooby-Doo. 
And what do you do in this game? Yeah, you, you fucking... You fucking fight. You fight ghosts. That's it. You fight ghosts. Like... You do that in every... You, pre, you do that in every single level. It doesn't control the best. But I, I would say some people do like this game. I'm not one of them. But the way he Scooby punches the ghost... It doesn't look like he's beating up the ghost. He looks like he's beating off the ghost. Yeah. No, it, it, just, it just looks... It looks fucking dodgy the way Scooby do. is like beating him. Oh, no. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, I need to... Uh, need to calm myself down. Dear me. So, yeah. What other games have we got here? Just have a look. Uh, we've got... We've got Silkworm. A pretty good shoot -em up on the C64. Very good. Fantastic music by Barry Leach. Is this the best version of Silkworm? I don't know, but I really enjoy this game. And uh, as I say, I'm trying to get a bit better at it because I am absolutely useless. Absolutely useless at shoot em ups. I am terrible at this genre. But yeah, this is a this is a very good, very good version of uh, Silkworm. I do like it. Uh, now uh is a budget game that I mean some of the mag uh, some of the magazines at the time were a bit lukewarm to uh, around this game, but I I actually quite like this one actually. Uh, it, it's a uh, it's Street Surfer by uh, yeah yeah Entertainment USA, but yeah no, but were were they a part of Mastertronic or something? I can't remember. Were they part of the Mastertronic label? I I'm not too sure, but. You know what? This is actually this is actually a pretty good game. I mean, graphically it looks terrible, but the music by David Whittaker. Oh, I could just listen to that music all day. The music so sort of has like a Beach Boys style to it. I'm not a fan of the Beach Boys per se, but the music really suits the game. I mean, what you have to try and do is like uh, you have to like uh, collect you have to like collect bottles on the side of the road and. Uh, Try and stack up as many points as possible. One thing you will have to get used to though is uh, when it comes to accelerating your speed on the skateboard and slowing down. One thing you will have to get used to is the music slows down when you uh, when you go a bit slower and then speeds up when you go faster. But you know what? I actually quite like this game. I really do. Um, the first time I played it, I. Well, it's like, nah, it's alright, but it is grown on me quite a bit. So, yeah, here we go. Uh, next game, we have got another game that was absolutely superb. Possibly the best game on the ZX Spectrum, and pretty much, and even the Amstrad. The C64 version of this game, it's mediocre at best. It's, um, it's mediocre. Great game on the other computers, but not this one, uh... Uh, it, it's Target Target Renegade. The problem that I have with this game is the hit detection is a little off. The, there are times where, it, it, in the first level particularly, there are times where even when you are lined up properly, you can still, sometimes you cannot knock the, the bad guy off his bike. You cannot knock him off. You, uh, Sometimes you can, and other times, no matter what you do, you cannot do it. And... Yeah, it honestly it's quite it's quite frustrating because as I say, there are some there's some good stuff on this game. There really is. The music is one of my absolute favourites on the C sixty four. I'm trying to think who did the music. I, I did I put in my top twenty that were Gary Biasilla or whatever his name is. I I I'll probably butcher his uh, pronunciation up, but the music he did in this game is Absolutely incredible. I absolutely love the soundtrack on this game. Too bad the, the game itself is pretty mediocre. It's a shame because as it, ha it has all the fun has all the fundamentals. It has it does what it says on the tin, but the controls just don't feel particularly responsive, unlike on the Spectrum and Amstrad. Again, it's not it, the C64 version, not bad, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. Uh, next game is uh, another another ocean game, yeah, and yeah, another Hit Squad game. Uh, yeah, it's a movie tie-in game, and it's a uh, 
it, it, it's the Untouchables with uh, yeah the film starring Kevin Costner, and uh, believe it or not, I've never seen the film The Untouchables, so I don't know how close the game resembles to the actual movie, but yeah, I don't know how close the game resembles to the movie. But yeah, and just like any other ocean games, it's rock hard. I mean, I can get to like the second or third level, but to be fair. By that point, I've already like ran out of like continues and well, ran out of lives and stuff like that. But yeah, but you have some random levels. You have like you have like shooting gallery levels, and uh, I know that I say most of it's like shooting gallery levels. And there's one level where you're playing you're playing as like a pram or something. But I haven't even got that far into the game to see what that level's like. But from what I've played of it. It's not, it's not that bad actually, it's not bad at all, it's just really difficult as you'd expect. Um, next we've got a fighting game and the only fighting game I have on the on the C64. I mean, I pref I personally prefer International Karate by the late great Archer McLean, but I still think this is a good game and I think main master if you're watching is you, yeah. I know how much you love this game, and that is, of course, that is a way of the exploding fist. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I. Even though I do prefer international karate and IK plus particularly, this is still a really, really fun uh, fighting game. Really good karate game. Um, I played Fist Two, which is more of an adventure game. Didn't enjoy that one as much, but yeah, I quite like this game as well. I enjoy the music in it as well. Uh, now my favourite C64 game. My absolute favourite game for the C64. My number one game for it. At the moment it went. But yeah I think it's this, this game. Whizball. Phenomenal game. What more can I say about it? Everything about this game is just absolutely superb. I honestly... Yeah, in this game, you're you're a wizard. You you're controlling this ball, and uh, you you're, you're flying around space, and uh, you have to collect all different like uh, different colored potions, and uh, yeah, and you can like add extra stuff to your 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 flying space ball. Yeah, you can add. I know when you start the game, it does start off a little bit frustrating, especially when you have the ball like bouncing. You have to try. Figure out the right amount of spin to pound the boy because you don't you don't want your, your ball to go bouncing up and down like too much. You don't want it to be like boing 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 boing. Then you have to like so slowly do. And then eventually you can you get powers so you can actually control the ball without any problems. Yeah, you collect different powers up power power ups. You get great weapon upgrades and uh, yeah, you, you shoot a shitload of uh Objects. I, I don't know what kind of objects there are because there's like there's like flying things and there's like droplets as well that you can pick up. So yeah, this is a really addictive game. Very difficult, but what what once you figure out what you're doing, it's an absolute blast. It's a it for me. It's a ten out of ten every single day. It's a ten out of ten game. I maybe pray. I might be praising it too much, but I don't. I just love this game. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, uh, and what, what other games we've got? Oh, yeah, there's, oh, there's one game there. Well, there's four more games here, and then I announced the collection. I forgot about this game here. This one is uh, Toy Bazaar by uh, Activision. Yeah, released in 1984, I believe. But yeah, I've, I've only played this game a few times. Still haven't got the hang of it but from what I from what I plan to like it. So yeah what does it say on the back it tells you what you have to do. Uh, it says guide Merton the maintenance man through a night at the Gizmo automated toy works. The toys are in revolt. Balloons fill up at values. Turn the values off but watch out for hefty Hilda. You you don't really want to make her acquaintance but you will. So, so it, it just briefly tells you what the game is about. I'm still trying to figure it out, but it's not a bad game. It's 
it's, it's got a very arcade feel to it, and that's what I like about that. So we've got the last three games. Yeah, the part of a, the, the part of a, a series. You either love this series or you hate it, but I'd say I haven't got the first game and I haven't got the others as well, but yeah, so yeah. We've got we've got a we've got a Treasure Island Dizzy, yeah. Yeah, a puzzle platformer. I know it I know he was your favourite everyone's favourite mascot in the UK back in the eighties and very early nineties. Japan and America were dominated by Mario, but here in the UK it was all about Dizzy. Yeah, his games are a bit hit and miss for me, and uh, I quite quite like this game as well. I actually don't mind this game at all. Yeah, but I think most people probably play these games on the Spectrum and the, the Amstrad. But yeah, the C64 version of Treasure Island Dizzy is, is a very good game. And yeah, the music is done by Matt Gray, who of course done the music for Last Ninja 2 and Bangkok Nights. Yeah, both great soundtracks. And uh, yeah, and then we've got the third Dizzy game, possibly, probably my favourite one, which is a Fantasy World Dizzy. I did this one, I actually made quite a bit of progress in it. I haven't completed it yet, but I do actually quite, actually, I quite like this game. And then we got the fourth Dizzy game, and yeah, this this last game I've got in this uh, collection so far. Yeah, so today's game is it's all, sorry, not today's game, sorry. So yeah, the fourth game is uh, Magic Land Dizzy. And I got be honest with you, out of the Dizzy games I've played so far, this is probably the hardest one that I own. Anyway, the hardest Dizzy game is the first one. You can't, you can barely make anywhere in that game, but yeah. Tre Treasure Island Dizzy on the C60. The Treasure Island Dizzy. I already talked about that. Magic Land Dizzy, yeah. The fourth one. I mean, out of the three Dizzy games that I own so far, this is probably my least favourite. But still not bad. Just not one of my favourites, if I'm being honest with you. So anyway, I'm hoping to get a few more games for the Commodore 64 at some point. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this little collection. There'll be more collections coming along your way. So until then, I hope you have a good day. I suggest you take care and goodbye.